Welcome back to Arranging with Judy. Today's an extra special video for us. It's our anniversary and one year ago we started making these videos and in celebration of our anniversary we're recreating our first video uh, for YouTube this time. Um, and all of our social media handles now are Arranging with Judy. So you can find me everywhere at Arranging with Judy. So today we're going to take some milk glass vases and you know what I didn't even check to see if this is what I used last year but I just like the way they look so uh, this is what I chose. I have tall ones and I have short ones and what we're going to do with these is we're going to make a centerpiece but using uh, many containers and many arrangements instead of just doing one large long centerpiece and you could stretch this out along a, a nice long table you could put um, candlesticks and um, other, you know, foliages and things around the uh, bottom of it, the base of it. You could have, you know, doilies or a runner or, I mean, we're going to try all kinds of things with this. And hopefully we can just put a couple of little short videos at the end of this that will demonstrate how we use this on a long, narrow table. Okay. So normally when I'm making a bud vase, I will use a large... Um, focal material right just a little bit above the base of the container because that's where your eye is drawn first and normally when I'm doing a bud vase I will do okay pretend that this bud vase is a gladiola flower okay a whole stem with gladiolas and you know how at the at the base of the blossom it's always the largest showiest blossom and then as you go up the blossoms get smaller and they also get further apart. So that's usually what I'll do with a bud base. I'll do, you know, the first one down at the base, then one a little bit further away, and then one a little bit further away so that it stretches your eye up. But these are going to be used as a centerpiece. When you think about a centerpiece, normally you, if you do this on your table, you don't want them to be any taller than your eye. So a couple of the maybe more tapering materials will go above my eye, but with these spaced out like that, you should be able to see the person across from you at the table. That's the goal, okay? Unless, you know, nobody likes anybody on the other side. And then you can just make your arrangements as high as you want, okay? So I'm gonna start out, I went out to the garden this morning and I think I cut a, like way too many flowers, but I just had a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And most of the time when you go out to the garden, that's what you have. You know, not everybody is a flower farmer that has fields and fields of the same thing. So, it, but it makes it more interesting too, to, you know, kind of mix it up. Um, I have, let's see, I have white gooseneck loosestrife. I have uh, a couple different types of zinnias and some purple cone flowers. I have a little bit of um, mother of time flowers down here. I cut some of my absolutely favorite, favorite uh, Kent Beauty oregano. Um, I have some, um, two different types of yarrow and some really, really great uh, uh, sea oats. They haven't opened yet, so they're just like sea oat buds, I guess you'd call them. But I like the way they just kind of, you know, wiggle back and forth in the, in the breeze. I also cut a couple different types of hydrangeas. I have um, this one um, and a little bit flatter one. I have one that's a, you know, panicled and then I have a flat one. So we should be able to have a lot of fun with these. I also got um, some lamb's ears and um, I cut, I, I, I hated to take this away from the butterflies because right now the butterflies love it, but I have this um, oregano that's blooming too and it's lovely in a flower arrangement. Um, let's see, I got a little bit of GM and a little bit of my favorite striped grass. I can show you the GM. The GM is actually, I guess you'd call it a seed pod now, uh, but look at how interesting that is and what great texture that'll put in my arrangement. So I guess I'll start with my where do I want to start? I think I want to start with these big fat flowers because these are really going to take up a lot of my real estate. And I cut them short because I wanted to um, leave the buds that were coming up on the, on the sides. So this is kind of my first blossoms that came out. 
And what I want to do with these, since these are going, going to be such a big dynamic flower, I'd like to divide these up so that they, um, I have a few in each, uh, each level. Cause you know, I have the talls here and then I have the shorts there kind of in betweens here. So I'll, I'll try to kind of mix them up and put them in, um, different, different areas. So I don't really want these to be too close to the same. It might be okay in this taller vase. And then I'll put a small one. Boy, maybe I'll put a small one right here and another small one over here. And then maybe this other one kind of in the middle here, but I want it to be a little shorter. Yeah. So, so I'm kind of putting the pink through the whole thing. And then I'll take these because they're kind of the same shade and the same tone, almost the same size. And I'll put them in next. These comb flowers are just so fun and so happy. Um, I think they just add a lot. And again, I stole those from the butterflies. I don't usually cut any of my comb flowers because, oh, I just took that out. Do you see why? It's too close to the same height as this one. So I'm going to tuck this one down in. And then this one, ooh, it's short. Well, it'll be one of the lower placements. Oh, but that's too close, isn't it? All right, it's going to be a very low placement in there. Um, so I have this really fabulous um, uh, mother of time. It is blooming all over in the vegetable garden. And um, I, I don't know, I might want to add this at the end because I'm afraid it's going to get lost, you know. But it'll, it'll hang over. Yeah, I think I'll add it at the end. Sorry, you go back in there. Okay, so I've got that far. I'm going to go back and add some more pink, I think, and then we'll move on to some of the other colors. So I, I can see I need a little guy down here. It keeps talking to me that I don't have anything in that little tiny pitcher. You know, um, I just happen to love milk glass, but if you have something that speaks to you, keep an eye out for it. And, you know, making a collection of things, you can have different sizes and different shapes, but all like one unifying color and it makes it, um, you know, more cohesive. And I've been collecting milk glass for way, way too many years. And I have way, way too many, but, um, you know, whatever the fads are, just go with what you like, you know, um, and it'll, it'll serve you well. All right, I have these two babies. I'm just going to put these aside. Um, do I want to put this color in next? I think maybe I'll put this false mallow in next. I'm going to put all the pinks in and then kind of accent with the, um, other color. So I'm just going to try and make this so that it all kind of um, flows. Okay. So I have some on top on my top layer here and then some on the bottom in my lower level there. And this would be, you know, the way I would normally construct a, many arrangements like this. You could for sure do all zinnias in one vase and all coneflowers in another vase and all yarrow in another vase and some false mallow in another. You could do that and, and then put them together and it would make a really interesting arrangement. Um, and it, you know, just uh, do it the same way, but just um, put one type of flower in at a time in, in each vase. And um, it, it ends up being real cute. Uh, but I thought this would be just a fun way to do this. And this is the way I did it last year. So since we're recreating. All right. I want to put in some of this Kent Beauty oregano. I don't know if you grow this in your garden, but uh, if you don't, you should. Because you'll fall in love with it, I promise. It lasts forever in a flower arrangement. And it will dry just like this. 
and it's just and it smells wonderful and I mean look at the look at how lovely each florette is they're just so beautiful um, and uh, he, here at my house it's a perennial it comes up every year um, I know some people say that they can't get it to stay every year and that they have to plant it every year but um, it it likes my it likes my house <laughs> and then I have some friends who who have successfully had it over winter um, but it's just the scent of it is just wonderful it's just um, a beautiful flower and I always have a pot of it drying in the house for the winter because I just like to walk past it and sniff it and um, it just it, it looks just like this when it dries it's just so beautiful all right you know what I might have these two close together to uh, put together here um, so I'm just going through and adding a couple pieces to each vase I do have them too close together you're gonna have trouble seeing what I'm doing And you kind of want them to not just be like one-sided either because if you know if there's somebody sitting across from you they want to they don't want to look at the at the back side of an arrangement you know and have just you look at the pretty side so you want to make these so that they're viewed from all sides all right you know what this needs to be shorter this one's just going to be a cute little something. I don't know how much I'm going to be able to fit in that one. But I just love that little picture. It's just so sweet. And it comes, uh, that one had a little, a little topper on it too. Um, I don't know what it was originally used for, but it's too small for like a vinegar cruet or something. Um, anyway, and this little picture has a little sugar bowl that goes with it. A lot of the, a lot of the, the vases that I've collected have a story behind them. I don't know if yours do too. It's kind of nice to have something that's, you know, sentimental. As well as decorative and useful. Oh my gosh, just look at this! Isn't this just the most gorgeous thing? All right. So. Hmm. And I love the shading on this. All the different greens and pinks and it's just lovely. I might be able to put some of this hanging over the front of that too, I hope. Yeah. All right. So I might have cut too much of this. This might go in that bowl <laughs> to dry if I don't use it all. Okay, so I have this um, hydrangea that I should put in next, I think. Let me see how many of these I have. And I have little tiny ones and I have larger ones, so we can, you know, kind of mix it up. I think this needs a baby one in here. I don't like the way that's working there. Okay, I'll cut it off shorter. All right, and one of these is going to be up here because this is looking kind of empty. And another one off to the side over here. I did cut too many flowers, you guys. Um, another one here. And then one over here. Am I am I too far over with these? Um, it just seems like I'm running out of space here. All right, I'm putting one on this side. You can't see it, but I can. And then one more over here. On this side 
And then that's it for those. So I have a few more over here that I could add to the ones that don't have a hydrangea in them. They're just these, you know, maybe I don't want a hydrangea in here. Let me see. Because I, I have that loose strife that's white too, and that'll bring the white into it. But this might be too fat of a stem for that. It is. Okay. So I'll just put this one in here, and then I'll go to the loose strife instead. Is that going to work? All right, where was that little guy? And this um, particular loose strife is very aggressive. Um, I wouldn't not have it in my garden, but um, it'll take over. So you just have to watch it. But it's very dependable, too. You know you're going to have it every year, and you know pretty much when it's going to bloom. So that, that's, it's got its you know, good points, too. And it's lovely. It just adds so much to an arrangement. I need a little bit of height here and a little bit over the edge, too, on this one. All right, so if we um, have room, I really want to put uh, this. Um, well, I want to put some of my ribbon grass in. And I want to put um, some of my sea oats in because I think those would be really fun. I have to turn this guy for a minute. He's looking like he needs something else pink um, over here. And maybe it'll just be a peachy pink. Oh, I have the oregano. The oregano will work. More pink any place? That's too tall. Aren't these fun? I mean, these would be really lovely, just all green and white. And I really t was torn today whether I should do all green and white or add the pink. But um, my zinnias were blooming really nicely, so that kind of talked me into it. One over here. And one over here. Oops, I'm pulling that out. And I still think this little fat pitcher needs another little white thing. And one more white up here. Now, okay, do we want to put the GM in? Let's see how we like it. It's got such a neat texture. Do we like it or not? It's kind of fun, isn't it? We'll put a few of them in, just here and there. One up here for this. This one's getting a little tight. I think it's just time to tuck these in. Okay. Um, just kind of in the middle. And then we, I think we need one over here. And I'll tuck it over here. I just think these are so much fun. And they add so much um, motion when you look at them. And then one over down here. And then, oh, 
that's too tall. Okay. Um, that one will go in right there. And then I just need a couple more down in the front. And then I think we've probably reached our capacity uh, for flowers in these. We might be full up. Let's see. Should I put one more in here? They're just so sweet. These can be used from now until frost because they change, you know, they get bigger, they get the, these are just buds, so they get those lovely little oats on them and then they turn kind of a, a pinky tan color and they just um, keep changing through the seasons and you can just keep using them for um, flower arranging. And then they dry and so you just got them all the time then. So if I wanted, I could just go back now and I could just tuck in a little bit of um, this little uh, mother of time blossom. Any place where I feel like there's too much of the, of the edge of the container showing or where I just feel like I need a little bit of pink added to it and it gives it another lovely scent and a little uh, filler too, you know. So, is there anything, any place else where I need it? Maybe in that little fat one down there. That little fat one has taken more materials than even the great big ones. All right. So, I think at this point, we're going to call it done. And then I'm going to regroup and I'll show you kind of what you can do with it. And what you can do if you don't have milk glass bases. Okay? Thanks for watching. I'll be right back. All right, so this, I really need a table like way, way longer than what I have here. But this is kind of the idea that I'm trying to get you to, to understand. I have the, the little doilies making a runner or you could use a runner. And then you just, you know, you could stretch these out quite a ways more um, with different candlesticks. Uh, you could use um, column candles mixed with tapers and it'd be lots of fun. Talls and shorts, you want a lot of different uh, levels here and then if you wanted you could just sprinkle little flower heads or flower petals through the whole thing but this is the idea that I'm trying to get a nice long narrow centerpiece without actually being a big clunky container okay and then I have a couple more to show you after this so um, this is not the right table of course but if this was a a dessert table or um, uh, an actual table that you ate at, like a ten top. This is not a ten top, of course, but this is kind of the look I'm going after with the the round arrangement. You know, with a round table, I have a a glass uh, cake plate that I put in the middle, and then I put some of the smaller ones on the cake plate, and then some of the smaller ones are like surrounding it too. And then again with candlesticks and you have a really really impactful centerpiece without a lot of work without a lot of flowers but just with a lot of little containers i have one more thing i want to show you okay so you might not have a whole bunch of milk glass containers at home little bud vases and pitchers and stuff but I'm telling you, go to the condiment section of the grocery store and you're going to find any kind of glass bottle you might want I have um, a mustard jar and a um, garlic oil jar and a soy sauce jar and a yuzu jar and a little tiny honey jar and some spice jars and you can just take all of these and soak the labels off of them and you can uh, have the same effect without having to search down you know a whole bunch of white milk glass um, containers and I mean if you wanted to do a party like if you wanted to do your own wedding or whatever, just get everybody to start soaking labels off of their bottles about a year before you get married. And then you'll have all the bottles you need. And you can just put them in and just stretch them out on the tables or make them round like the last one I showed you. And it'll, it'll have the same effect as my milk glass ones did. So if you enjoyed watching this, please like, share, subscribe, tell your friends. It helps my engagement. 
and uh, we'll see if we can bring some more gardening goodness to you. Thank you so much for watching.